Hey, what's up Plant Tribe? And welcome back to the fifth episode of this vlog about growing my tiny tropical garden in the south of the UK. So this week the garden's still putting on a lot of new lush, leafy new growth and it's giving the garden a real jungly feel. Plenty of plants are out in bloom which is great for the pollinators. I managed to get myself this small loquat tree for only four pounds. You can't beat its huge evergreen leaves for that tropical exotic garden look. It actually flowers through the winter, so if you're lucky, you can get fruit early in the year. Now most of the succulents at the top of the stream are still in bloom, which is great for the pollinating insects, and I'm gonna make more of a conscious effort to help them in my tiny tropical garden. This succulent was given to me at Christmas and I just haven't got time to planting it out. But all the time it's been in the pot, it's been putting out these new, smaller plants. So I'm gonna take the time to divide it now and plant it up at the top of the stream. These plants are super easy to divide. All you have to do is gently pull away at one of the smaller plants and it comes away with the base intact. Now the trick with these is to leave them in sunlight for 48 hours to dry out and then plant them. It just helps encourage the succulents to put out roots. I'm hoping they love this spot as much as the other succulents that are already here. Now I've planted them with good, gritty, well-drained soil and they seem to love baking in the heat of the rocks on a warm sunny day. I'm planting these at the top of the stream to add a bit more greenery and hopefully cover up some of the concrete and exposed pond liner. One of our heucheras has got infected with heuchera rust, which is a fungal infection you can tell because the leaves become mottled with these dark rusty spots on the underside. It's the result of overly damp conditions. So what I've done is cut off all of the infected foliage, kept it out of the compost pile, and I've lifted the plants and moved them to a better drier spot with more air circulation. And I'll keep you updated whether that solves the problem. Now you might remember this rose was a single woody stem when we took over the garden, and it's put on a lot of new growth and even put out a couple of blooms, but it still doesn't look 100% happy. Now this rose is under attack from aphids, but I'm not gonna spray them with chemicals. I'm trying to be as environmentally friendly as I can. Now I'll hose the aphids off at the end of every day, but to add something to the soil to try and help the rose, I'm gonna bury this banana peel. Now as bananas break down in the soil, they release potassium and the rose will absorb this and it's an essential ingredient in the process of photosynthesis. So I'll let you know whether this helps the rose perk up or not. The lily beetles are making themselves right at home in our garden. They look great and tropical, but they're destroying the lilies. Now, I don't want to spray the leaves, so every time I see a beetle, I take it off and I throw it as far away as possible. I know they'll come back, but besides squashing them, it's the best I can do. And after all, when I started this garden, I said I wanted to attract wildlife. Now I've finally put this hardy banana into the ground. I've mulched around the base with brass clippings and used coffee grounds, just to keep feeding the banana as it grows and keeping the soil as damp as possible, which helps because it's planted just in front of a bamboo, which appreciates similar conditions. You might remember, I had planted it into a pot before, and inside the pot, I used a combination of grass clipping, chicken manure pellets, and soil. It was only in the pot for a few weeks, but when I took it out, all of that had decomposed already. But as with all of the other new growth in the garden, the aphids are loving the banana leaf. At the end of every day, when I'm hosing down the garden, I'll give these a good jet wash, just to keep them off. This is pretty awesome. Our intense blue fescue grass has gone to seed. I'm gonna harvest as many seeds as I can and see how many more blue fescue plants I can grow. And blue is such a rare color in the garden and this intense blue variety is great for a tiny tropical garden. Now this golden grass and the heuchera behind it are divided from other plants in the garden and they're both still loving life in the new spots in the living wall by the stream. The contrast of the yellowy lime green foliage with the dark purple foliage of the heuchera work really well in our tropical garden. And the divided sedums that we've put in the living wall just upstream are doing great as well. I'm finding these plants to be the unsung heroes in my tropical garden. They are so tough and that evergreen foliage is gonna work well. On the other side of the stream, our creeping thyme has gone into flower. These tiny intense pink flowers are awesome and the bees love this plant too. 
it's creeping over the rocks and we should have a nice big clump by next year. Just a tiny bit further upstream from the creeping thyme is another sedum and it's put up this one long flower spike with tiny little yellow flower buds looking like they're about to open on top. Now I was kindly gifted this acacia dilbata which is an awesome plant. It's got evergreen, ferny like leaves and they close up at night. At the moment it's planted in a container by the brick wall enjoying the sunshine but I'd like to move it to somewhere where you can see through the feathery foliage down the garden. Now this one's been on the shopping list for a while and it was another gift. It's Fatio japonica spider's web. It's got this white variegated pattern on the leaves which is perfect for brightening up a dark end of the garden. The new leaves are almost pure white as they come out and the patina on them is awesome. And this particular plant has deeply lobed leaves which are great for that tropical look in the garden. Just in front of the Fatia, I've planted an Alcamilla mollis. I love using this plant in shady areas because although the leaves are relatively dark green, they're always covered with these speckles of water droplets which sparkle and refract water in the daylight and brighten up a shady area. I am actually surprised at how much growth we've managed to get in the first few months of this garden. And I'm hoping with lots of feed and love and care, this tiny tropical garden is going to continue to grow throughout the year. Now next week it's all change in our tiny tropical garden because the old ugly shed at the bottom of the garden is going and we've got something new coming. If you want to be part of the plant tribe, hit subscribe. And if you want to be part of the conversation, comment below. I'll always get back to you. Cheers for watching.